Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guest is from Seagate. We have Kent Smith. He is a Senior Director of Product Marketing at the company. Kent, how are you today? Well, well, well thanks for coming on, Kent. I understand you have a number of products uh, coming out in the near future, but today we're here to talk about Seagate Flash Solutions. And I brought your slides up. Why don't we go through that, and then we'll follow it with uh, Q&A. That sounds great. Excellent. Thank you. So let's start giving some background on Seagate for those who may not be familiar with how much Seagate's changed. Uh, slide two, I think, gives a really good overview of uh, where, where Seagate is headed now for uh, addressing the trends that are coming up. Uh, the the amazing amount of infrastructure expansion that's in, that's uh, gone on over the last few years. You know, a lot of people uh, even still think of Seagate as a hard drive company, but uh, we've expanded so far beyond that with some, uh, an, uh, in fact, a number of acquisitions over the last few years. Uh, there's so many different areas that we now cover, uh, and uh, and I think uh, we're well positioned. Uh, for the future to take care of uh, all those data management needs. <clears throat> now, specifically uh, for the area that I'm going to talk about today, uh, slide uh, three actually gives you a, a good idea of where the Flash products fit within uh, Seagate's uh, different uh, product lines. Uh, if you uh, look at this slide, you can see the different areas that we have in the Seagate Cloud Systems and Electronic Solutions Group. Uh, this is a, 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 a group that, you know, if I could simplify it, is sort of like the area that's uh, everything outside of rotating media. Um, so this has your, your systems, uh, uh, the acquisition from Xyratex and, and Evolt, and the, uh, the Flash products through the LSI acquisition from Avago. All that stuff sits, uh, sits within this group, and we're going to dive into the Flash products today. Now, slide four, uh, for those uh, uh, who are less uh, aware of, uh, you know, why is Flash so important? A lot of people ask me, you know, hey, I'm hearing Flash is such a critical element uh, going forward, but I don't understand why. Uh, I, I created this slide to help people kind of understand how critical it really is. And so if you look at that uh, chart, you can see processors at the top of the chart, and everything's about getting data to the processor so that it can process it. So anything inside the processor is instantaneous. Anything that's in the caches as you get further and further away from the processor, clear out to the main memory, you can see the delay time it takes uh, gets larger and larger. Now, 100 nanoseconds is nothing, you know, for us humans, but in computer time, that's, that's pretty large. If you skip down to where hard drives are today, you've got a massive gap. You've got a 100,000 time delta between what the main memory response time is and what a hard drive is. And so that's where flash comes in. Flash bridges that gap because it can get down uh, into, you know, not a hundred thousand times delta from the main CPU, but maybe only 1,000 or, or 10,000. So it's a huge drop in that latency, and, and it's all about getting to the data. Now, if we go to slide five, you can see, uh, the, looking at the NAND flash evolution that's going on uh, over the last uh, few years, the, uh, the geometries that are used for flash keep shrinking and brings huge benefit to the industry. You've got lower cost per gigabyte, higher capacity, a higher unit volume. These are all great things for all of us that are, are buying these devices and using them in our, uh, in our offices. Uh, but they come with challenges. And you, you have uh, uh, shorter and shorter endurances uh, because of the way Flash works, you can only write to it so many times. So essentially, it wears out sooner and sooner. And to overcome this, you have to have all sorts of great uh, technology in your controllers to uh, address those challenges with the shorter endurance, uh, the, the higher failure rates of the bits themselves. 
uh, all to ensure that you can still use this to store you know, all your bank records and grandma's photos. So this is all very, very important and, uh, and a key part of where the, the, the investments that Seagate is making uh, into the flash market. So I'll take us to slide six. Uh, this is uh, a product that we announced on August 4th. And uh, uh, the, I should say, uh, slide six has the, uh, uh, the new SaaS product, the 1200.2, that we announced on August 4th. Uh, this expands out our current SaaS product portfolio uh, and as well augments the other products that we've got in the, in the flash uh, category. And so that's where we're going we're gonna to dive into uh, that new SaaS technology. So I'll take you to slide eight. Uh, this is something that we've got uh, uh, some, uh, some great feedback from our OEM customers. We've got uh, uh, opportunities to hear how our customers have been using Flash over the last few years. And what we're finding is that there's more and more opportunity uh, for wider endurance offerings. And so if, uh, if I think I mentioned endurance is, uh, is essentially how long the flash or the SSD can last. And so this is a measure that's often termed in drive rights per day. And so if you think about, uh, uh, let's say I have a hundred gig uh, flash SSD. If I want to write a hundred gigs in a day, uh, well, that's a lot of data, by the way. I'd have a, a requirement for a hundred drive. I'm sorry, a one drive write per day device. Now there are some extreme use conditions in the high performance computing that can get upwards of 25 drive writes per day. That's a lot of data coming through there, and so that wide range of uh, endurance. Is, uh, is actually rather difficult to address with a single platform. So if you could build one platform, one SSD uh, architecture that could uh, span such a large range and as well provide a large range for uh, capacity, you know, let's say going from 200 gigabytes to even up to four terabytes, you know, that would be a great product because the OEM uh, when they before they can use a drive, they have to go through a bunch of qualification tests, and you know doing that costs time and resource. So if you have a bunch of different technologies and products to address uh, address these different uh, segments of uh, endurance and capacity, you know you're going to be testing for months and months and months. So if we can build something that addresses all those needs into a single platform greatly reduces their test time. So Rich, can you, uh, can you imagine what we might have done then? Well, I've got a pretty good idea, but, but tell me more. Okay. So uh, if we take a look at slide nine, you'll see the results of uh, all that effort. Uh, we've got an enterprise grade product uh, that uh, provides an extremely fast interface. This is based on the 12 gigabit per second SAS interface. Uh, which means it can do up to 24 gigabits per second when you use both channels to a single host. And it, it offers that capacity range I was talking about, as well as multiple endurance options in that single platform. And I'll, I'll save uh, that endurance detail for the slide next. Uh, but let me continue here. Uh, because it's SaaS, you have uh, the option of uh, no single point of failure so you can have multiple hosts communicating to the storage device. Uh, and, and as well, SAS has the option of adding uh, a T10 diff, and that's a feature that allows uh, the device to receive data from the host and have uh, a special uh, little key, I'll, I'll call it, or, or some kind of uh, uh, identifier that uh, when the data is sent all the way through to the flash and then the host asks for it back, uh, there's a, an identifier that allows the host to look 
at the two pieces of information that it gets back in that one read, and it confirms that, yes, the data that it sent is exactly the same as the data it's receiving now. It's really cool stuff, and it prevents what would be called silent data corruption, and that would be data that gets changed and nobody knows, right? That would be very bad, so this prevents that. It's really critical in the enterprise environment. As well, if your host is sending data to the storage device and you lose power, if the device has already said, yes, I received that information and I'll get, get it taken care of, you want to make sure it's saved out. And so if, uh, if you have uh, um, uh, you know, any kind of power loss, you want to make sure that you have the ability to write through all that data to the flash, because otherwise it'd be gone. And you potentially have uh, data corruption, whether it's silent or not, depends on how your hierarchy is, in, is, uh, is uh, uh, architected. But in this case, you don't have to worry about it. It's not a problem. You've got that protection built in. And then if security is an issue, uh, this drive uh, provides uh, SED and FIPS compliance, uh, preventing unauthorized access to the data. Now, uh, something I did not mention when we were talking about endurance requirements from the customers, uh, they also need to, uh, need to be able to give a consistent warranty period. You know, and, and a pretty typical warranty for enterprise uh, equipment is, uh, is in that five-year range. So they'd want a device, a storage uh, SSD, to be able to handle a full five-year drive life, you know, even under those right intensive workloads. And so that's, that's key uh, to this total solution. So let's, let's look a little deeper on slide 10 uh, at those multiple endurance configurations I was talking about. Uh, so a couple of examples here maybe. Uh, if we look at the high endurance of, uh, let's say, 25 drive writes per day, that's a lot of data. That means if it's a, if it's a 100 gig SSD, you're writing 2.5 terabytes a day to it. Okay. You know, it's not like uh, all those people are growing on trees, but there's a lot of opportunities for that. So let's take one example. Let's look at the stock market. Can you imagine how many transactions occur at any one second? Uh, there's a lot of stuff traveling through, and so there's a lot of writes happening uh, to those uh, storage devices. And because it's, you know, of course, the stock market, everything's happening at the fastest possible speed, uh, so you will typically have uh, solid state drive somewhere in that environment. And so it need to handle something like 25 drive rights per day uh, to manage it. Now, as we step down through the different uh, levels, you can see at 10 drive rights per day, that might be something like maybe a 70-30 read-write mix, where 30% of the time is writes and the rest is reads. Uh, three drive rights per day would be something like maybe uh, 90, 10, read, write, where only 10% of the time is write. And then you've got the one drive write per day or less. Uh, that's something uh, where you're essentially writing just a few times and reading almost all the time. Uh, an example of that might be uh, if you think about uh, uh, Google Trends, you know, what's the hot topic of the day? You know, whatever that happens to be, you know, uh, the Google search engine will put that information on, uh, let's say, this, this drive here. Uh, so it'll write it once, and then all day long people are reading it. And so you have hundreds and thousands and, and even millions, I'm sure, uh, requests for that same data, but you only had to write it once. And so then the next day there's another new hot topic, so it rotates through. So perfect example of where you'd use one drive write per day. So all these different endurance levels are available from this one platform. So if we look at slide 12, uh, looking at that table, you can see the different capacities that are available uh, at those different endurance tiers. And so there's combinations of things that we do inside of that one uh, architecture to allow that single platform to range so widely. You know, some of it is different levels of over-provisioning. Uh, some of it is different quantities of flash. Uh, and as you can see there, there's, uh, there's that uh, large range of, uh, of options that, uh, that you can choose from. 
Now, something I did not mention, <clears throat> sequential reads on this, uh, on this product is actually pretty phenomenal. If you look at how much you can transfer in the, uh, uh, the, the 12 gig uh, SAS environment, uh, when you're transferring sequentially, you generally top out at about uh, 1,100 megabytes per second. That's the max that that bus can do. Well, SAS can have dual channels, and uh, through those uh, dual channels, you can talk to the same host. Well, as far as I've seen published until uh, we announced this product, I think the best number I've seen on 12 gig SAS was something like 12 or, or 13 maybe uh, 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 megabytes per second. Um, and that, and hopefully I've been saying megabytes per second and not gigabytes per second. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, so megabytes per second uh, at about 1,200 is about the most I've seen. So 1,800 megabytes per second with this product is 50% uh, faster than anything I've seen so far. So that's a truly impressive number that uh, um, is also reflected in a demonstration uh, uh, that we're going to be doing at the Flash Memory Summit. Um, and so I, uh, uh, I'll hold off on giving any details of that because we're kind of keeping that uh, for those people that show up. And then, uh, you know, once, once we show that demo, uh, we'll talk about it uh, openly to everybody. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, that's uh, uh, kind of a summary of our 1200.2 SAS SSD. It's our second generation of the 1200 uh, SAS SSD that we uh, offer today. And as I mentioned, this uh, uh, was announced on August 4th. And uh, let me wrap up with one other interesting point on slide 12. We announced a strategic collaboration with Micron uh, back in February. We talked about how we would work together to uh, share technology between us and uh, potentially build some some really cool products, well, here you go. This is it. Uh, this is a product that we uh, make available uh, uh, between us. And in fact, we're both offering this same product to our customers uh, under each of our names. So um, uh, customers that are uh, buying uh, products from Micron or from Seagate can actually select the same uh, product, uh, go through a qual, and even have a dual source because we're both offering it. Uh, so a great opportunity to see uh, in this product the things that we can do when we both act as though it's a single company when we build this product. Cool things can be done with Flash. Uh, Micron knows all sorts of really neat things they can do with their Flash, but of course they save that for the products that they build um, and, and so there's, there's things that, uh, that we can now do together because this is their product too. So the great news is for those uh, uh, customers that are going to be using this product, they get to take advantage of that uh, from both of us. So I think that uh, kind of wraps up uh, the, the new product information we've got here. And uh, I guess we can open it up for some questions. Okay. Well, thanks, Kent. So uh, the question I had, you didn't talk about density. Uh, uh, how much more dense in terms of what you can put in a rack in terms of storage is this kind of device versus uh, a spinning disk? Ah, good question. Uh, so flash in general is uh, uh, actually uh, the focus of, let me restate that, the focus of flash is to increase your performance to a, uh, a very substantial level over what you can get uh, with uh, rotating media. When you, uh, when, you, when you have a hard disk drive, of course, you have uh, lots of capacity for each dollar that you spend, uh, but you don't get the same performance uh, for each of those dollars. So the, uh, uh, the density advantage you get is really, really high performance in that same cubic inch, you know, whatever your, your space constraint is. And then uh, when you do talk about, you know, how much capacity you can get uh, in, a, uh, a, a, in a flash configuration versus a hard drive, it actually also depends on how you've got it configured. Now, this particular product is using uh, what would look like a hard drive. 
You know, it's a two and a half inch uh, form factor. Um, and depending on what capacity you have, the larger capacities actually, uh, uh, I should say the smaller capacity is uh, seven millimeter and the larger capacity is 15 millimeter. So you do get uh, an advantage in performance in that same uh, space. Uh, but interestingly, you know, capacity wise, when you get up to the very high capacity drives, you know, maybe it's only a two, maybe three X increase, you know, something in that range. It's not phenomenal, but the performance increase per, per, per uh, cubic inch is uh, phenomenally greater. So great. So Kent, would you just say that you've achieved parity in terms of enterprise features on the flash side versus what the, the customers are used to with spinning disk? Yeah, if you consider, uh, you know, features in the area of, uh, you know, robustness, uh, 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 the, the interface capabilities, you know, everything uh, that you can do with SAS, with rotating media, you can do with Flash, you have all the same command support. And in fact, this particular product line is actually designed so that you can take a current installation of SAS HDDs, uh, you know, you've, let's say you've had that for a few years and you want to start making it faster, you literally can pull out a hard drive and plug in uh, one of these uh, 1200 SSDs and immediately your system gets the advantage of higher performance. And you don't have to worry about anything else changing because it's all built in. It's all uh, literally invisible to everything, uh, you know, outside of the device itself. You have, uh, you know, all the power fail uh, capabilities uh, uh, protecting the data. You have all the uh, data security. Um, in fact, I'd, I'd love to, uh, you know, talk with anybody who thinks we haven't achieved that parity. Yeah, yeah. Well, kind of a wrap-up question then, uh, Kent, is uh, how easy is it to kick the tires? Is it just a matter of swapping hardware uh, to enjoy the benefits of, of this kind of technology? Yeah, you know, for this one in particular, we're talking about a SAS interface. So, yep. you know, clearly you would need, uh, you know, a SAS controller or a server. Uh, but from that perspective, if you've currently got SAS drives in your enterprise application, uh, literally plug, uh, unplug the hard uh, hard drive and plug in this SAS SSD and and you're you're ready to go. <laughs> okay. Well, great. Well, Kent Smith, I want to thank you once again for... Uh coming on the show today well thank you rich it's been a pleasure you bet okay folks that's it for the rich report stay tuned for more news and information on high performance computing